Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Certainly God has been good to us. Has he been good to anybody? We welcome you to this first Friday fill up the Preacher's Network 901. I don't know what you came to do, but we came to lift the name of Jesus. Whether you watch it live or later, right here in the sanctuary on Facebook, we're grateful to God that you've decided to join us today. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. We're going to start the service. Pastor Sherman Helton Jr. is coming now with our prayer and scripture, and then we'll take you just a little step further from there. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that ye the Lord, he is God. It is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we are to enter to his gates with thanksgiving. To his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, right now, we just come in right now just to say that we love you, Lord. Lord, we thank you just for this day. Lord, that you woke us up with brand new mercies this morning, Lord. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for clothing us in our right mind, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, thank you for your covering last night, Lord. Lord, thank you for how you cover our family and our friends. So, Lord, right now, we want to thank you for the good times and the mountaintop experiences, Lord. But also, Lord, we still want to thank you for your presence, because even in the valley times, Lord, you are still there. So, Lord, right now, bless tonight. Lord, bless our leaders, Lord. Bless our preachers. Bless our singers, Lord. Bless the musicians. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice here in this sanctuary building, here over the social media airways. Lord, right now, we salute our you, God. 
Lord, we humble ourselves before you. Lord, continue to give us strength as we continue to trust in you with all our heart and all our might. These things that we ask in Jesus Christ's name, we pray together. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're not going to belabor the time. Amen. We're excited tonight for the one and only Latoya Strong is here with us tonight. The psalmist, she's coming. Amen. To minister. Amen. In song. Come on and give God praise for her as she comes. Amen. Come on and give God praise for her as she comes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. If you happen just to be in the land of the living, come on, come on and bless God on tonight. Come on, I want you to join in with me with praise and worship. Uh, just a little song that says. Come on, come on.
who are here. Uh, come on, pastors, wave your hands. Amen. All of these great pastors and preachers. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. And for those of you who are watching and supporting us, I'm not going to be late the time. We want to get to this first preacher tonight. This preacher, this man of God is the pastor of the Philadelphia Missionary Baptist Church in Rossville, Tennessee. I have reference to none other than that of the pastor Marlon Bradford. Come on and stand to your feet, those in the sanctuary, and those of you who are watching on Facebook, if you would just simply extend your hand in his direction and say, Pastor Bradford, preach the word. Pastor Bradford, preach the word. Come on and give God praise as he comes. Come on and give God praise for this pastor, this man of God, as he comes. Amen. joy it is my brothers and sisters to be in the land of the living on our way to the land of the dying amen it is a tremendous joy to greet you in divine love I am thankful to God for the privilege of being here tonight um, I am grateful. I know that there are many others that could have stood tonight, and the truth is there are many others that should have stood tonight, but I am thankful that God thought it not robbery to let the little preacher from Clarksdale, Mississippi, by way of Rossville, Tennessee, stand to share tonight. Uh, I don't plan to be before you long to those, the, my brothers and sisters in the gospel that are here to the Preachers Network, Preachers 901 Network. My brothers, I thank God for you for this esteemed opportunity. To all of you that are not only on the scene, but those of you that are watching on the screen, I thank God for you. I don't plan to be before you long. Again, uh, thank God for all of these preachers of the gospel. Thank God for Sister Strong that have led us into the presence of God. Um, there's a familiar passage of scripture, and I don't plan to be before you long. Those of you that have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to Acts chapter 27. And again, I do not plan to be before you long. My time has been given to me, so if I 
If I be a black Baptist preacher, y'all excuse me tonight. Amen, amen. Acts 27. And I want to read a few verses. Really want to read verse 44. That's really the only verse I really want to read, but from verses 31 through 44 will be kind of where we kind of uh, jump from. Verse 44 says this from Acts 27, and the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. I want to talk about broken, but still beneficial. Broken, but still beneficial, or for some, broken, but still usable. I've discovered my brothers and sisters, that there are only a few things that have benefits to being broken. Um, matter of fact, even as this morning I was fixing breakfast, I discovered that the only way I was able to enjoy eggs, the shell had to be broken. blessing of being broken is a story of what it really looks like for Christians to walk with God through the dark. When there's no easy answer, there's no quick relief, but yet and still we have to trust God's goodness even when it hurts us deeply. Let me ask you the question, have you ever been broken by God? Perhaps you've experienced, already experienced circumstances in life that are so shattering that have made you wonder today whether it's even possible to even pick up the pieces of life. And for some of you that are watching, you may even feel that possibly you cannot pick up the pieces. But I want to submit to you that by the grace of God, you can not only pick up the pieces, but God has use for your broken pieces. The good news is that he wants to be able to reassemble the broken pieces of your life into a wholeness that you can now enjoy. Beloved, my brothers and sisters, it took Michelangelo four years to craft his statue of David. It is 13 feet tall. He used, beloved, whether you know it or not, flawed marble. He, he took marble, the same block of marble that was rejected by another artist because it had breaks and impurities in it. But Michelangelo was able to see that the core of the marble was still good. Michelangelo was able to see what others could not see. Even though it had breaks in it, he still saw the benefit of it. Even though it was broken and flawed, had many imperfections, he saw usefulness with it. And beloved, you and I, Tonight, we all know what it means to be broken, to be shattered, to feel as if our world has been fallen apart, has been broken apart, been blown apart. We've at times in our lives, brothers and sisters, we've had to raise our head off of the pillow when we felt the tears that would not stop flowing. We've been broken, beloved. 
There are several things about brokenness that I've discovered. Brokenness, beloved, is a prerequisite for receiving God's grace. Not only is brokenness a, re a prerequisite for receiving God's grace, but I've discovered that brokenness allows God to freely work in our lives. Beloved, what we ought not do is run from being broken when God chooses to break us. Because I've discovered, beloved, that brokenness, it develops character qualities in us. There are some things that you and I would not be if it had not been for the beauty of brokenness. Beloved, even when you notice the brokenness of Paul, Paul, he stood before Agrippa. He stood before Nero's guillotine. He stood before Festus. He stood before Felix. He was white. He was whipped in Philippi and thrown in jail and he was stoned and left for dead. He was falsely accused. All because he chose to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you that God can use what we seen, what we look at as brokenness to benefit us. God can use what was used to destroy us or what man tried to use to destroy us, to deliver us. He can use what man tried to use to break us, to bless us. He can use what man used to harm us, to help us. He can turn our setbacks into our greatest setups. He can use what seemed like demolition he can use what seemed like a demotion and turn it into a promotion. Can I tell you, beloved, storms can hit every area of our lives. And when storms come, beloved, they come not only, beloved, to just come into your lives, but sometimes they come to break your life. And the right storm can make you feel so broken that you feel as though you are not able to survive. In our text, we find Paul, a prisoner en route to Rome on a ship that is about to encounter a storm. He was going to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. Paul was falsely accused of being a troublemaker and stirring up riots among the Jews. And beloved, let me tell you this, not only did Paul encounter a storm at midnight, but Paul encountered something at midnight that he could not see. Paul had to, uh, he had to contend with some oppositions. Beloved, he had to contend with the opposition of darkness that was brought by a storm. Paul was in a storm that was not caused by something that he did, but Paul was in a storm that was caused by people who made bad decisions. And can I tell you sometimes, beloved, some of our brokenness will not come because of decisions that we've made, but it will come because of decisions that people who are attached to us have made. Now because of the bad decisions of other people, Paul will be jeopardized. My brothers and sisters, your decisions, your choices that you make will not only affect you, but it will affect others around you. There were several things about this text and I want to share about being broken. Paul and them when you read verses 9 through 12, Paul warned them about the storm. Now they were about to suffer consequences for not listening. And can I tell you something? Just like you and I, we suffer consequences for us not listening. You and I have faced some situations because we've not listened. 
and we've departed too soon. But can't, but, but, but brothers and sisters, we can't criticize the captain too quickly for departing too soon because if we are to be honest, there's been times in our lives when we've departed too soon. Well, my brothers and sisters, can I tell you, you're departing too soon when you jump into something before God has given you permission to jump into it. Can I tell you, you're jumping too soon when you're jumping without God's endorsement or without God's direction or God's blessings. In fact, sometimes we want to do what God doesn't have for us to do at all. Broken but still usable. These men were found in a storm, beloved. And the Bible says that they had to make it on broken pieces. Now, I don't know about you, but there's been times in life where I've had to make it in broken pieces, make it on broken pieces. I don't know about you, but beloved, there's been some times when I've not listened to the word of God and I've had to, I've encountered some storms and some things have been broken in my life. And the only way I was able to make it was on broken pieces. Can I tell you something? When we find ourselves in storms and we find ourselves having to make it on broken pieces, one of the things I want to encourage all of us in this room is to do this, and that's to stay focused on the destination. Regardless of how the ship is breaking up, regardless of how Life is breaking around you. Stay focused, beloved. Stay focused on your destination. Because, beloved, God has a place for you. No matter how bad the storm is, no matter how bad the ship is breaking up on you, God has not only a plan but God has a place for you. God has a plan in the storm, and God has a place after the storm. So oftentimes, when we are in the midst of our storms, we forget about the God that has not only led us to the storm, but the God that will get us through the storm. Can I tell you something? God will... Beloved, give you favor even in your storm. God will give you favor in your storm. I got got Bible right here in verses 42 and 43. If you hadn't torn it out of your Bible, look at it if you're not careful. Look at it if you don't mind. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to make sure that they didn't swim ashore to escape. But the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul. So he didn't let them carry out their plan. Then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first to make it to land. Let me tell you some brothers and sisters, there are some storms and there are some things that have happened in life that have come to break you and to destroy you, but God has given you favor even in the midst of what has tried to destroy you. God is going to use it to develop you. And can I tell you something? Because of the favor that was on Paul's life, there were others that were saved. If nothing else, beloved, I need you to hear this. When it seems as though life has been broken, when it seems as though your life has been broken into pieces, you got to learn how to hold on to something. Because there are some storms, beloved, you can't swim in because it's too much to handle. There are some storms, beloved, you can't swim through. 
But you got to learn to hold on to the little bit that God has left for you. You got to learn how to hold on to the broken pieces. I know that it might not be what you want it to be. But you got to learn how to hold on to what you have. You got to learn to hold on to what you got left. God used broken pieces to bless us. God has a way of using broken things to bless us. God used broke speech to deliver the children of Israel. Can I tell you, God has a way of using brokenness. God has a way of using brokenness. God used a broken woman by the name of Esther. She came from a broken home. The Bible says that her parents died, but she had a cousin by the name of Mordecai who raised her. And even though she experienced brokenness, she still had value and she still was usable. I I'm reminded of somebody else that was broken. There was a woman from Samaria. The Bible said she had five husbands and the ones that she had wasn't even her own. But God found usefulness in her brokenness. And can I tell you, God has a way of finding usefulness in your brokenness. God took five loaves of bread and two fish and he broke it and he blessed the multitude. Can I tell you, God has a way of using brokenness to bless us. Can I tell you, God used his broken body on a hill called Calvary. He gave his hands to the nails and he gave his feet to the nails. He gave his side to the spear and they broke him on a cross. But that wasn't what ended him on a hill called Calvary. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. He hung his head for you and me he died. They thought that the broken pieces of Jesus would not be able to redeem mankind. But can I tell you when they broke him on a cross he provided wholeness for you and I on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame can I tell you his brokenness it brought about blessedness for you and I and I'm glad tonight that he was broken for me he was broken for you I'm reminded of a story of an old woman that was coming out of Family Dollar. She had her boys with her. And as she was walking out of Family Dollar, her baby boy saw the oldest boy. He had some toys in his hand. And he had some glow sticks in his hand. And the baby boy started crying because he wanted what the older boy had. The older boy gave his brother the, the glow sticks. And after he gave his brothers the glow stick, he took the glow stick back. And the, bro the little brother started crying. The mother started saying, give the stick back to your brother. Give the toy back to your brother. And the big brother said, Mama, he will not enjoy it until I do this. And the mama didn't understand. So the big brother took the glow stick and he broke the glow stick. And the little brother, he didn't understand why his brother took the glow stick and broke it. But the big brother told him that the glow wouldn't shine until it's been broken. And I came to tell somebody, your shine won't shine until you've been broken. I know you've been crying. I know you've been worrying about it. But God has used your brokenness to allow you to shine. Shine. 
shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine yes yes hey hey yes all in my home anybody gonna let it shine I've been broken but God still gets the glory I've had some heartaches in life but God still gets the glory I've had to cry myself to sleep at night but God still gets the glory I've had some nights I wanted to call it quits but God still gets the glory there's been some times I didn't know how I was gonna make it but God still gets the glory he broke me but he blessed me in my brokenness he broke me but he blessed me in my brokenness yes 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 I know we know the story about Humpty Dumpty they say Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall Humpty Dumpty he had a great fall all the king's horses and all the king's men they couldn't put Humpty back together again can I tell you something the problem was they gave Humpty to the wrong person they gave Humpty to the king's men they gave Humpty to the king's horses but can I tell you something when you give yourself and your broken pieces to the king of kings and the lord of laws he knows how to put us back together again is there anybody in the room tonight that can say he knows how to put me back together i've been broken but he's putting me back together again i've lost it but he's putting me back together again I've had some sleepless nights but he's putting me back together again yes Thanks be to God. Come on, let's praise God for Marlon Bradford. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, sir. Amen. Broken but beneficial. Amen. God bless you, sir. Making it on broken pieces. And whatever we do, we are to let our light shine. We praise God for you, sir. And we pray, God, that God will pour back into you what you have shared with us. Amen. Even in a reasonable double triple fashion amen we speak life to you and your ministry and thank you sir for being a good brother good pastor good preacher amen thank you sir for that powerful relevant right on time we're making it and broken but beneficial i've been helped tonight amen i rise in this auspicious occasion tonight as we're celebrating to honor and to recognize the angels of this house none other than Pastor Paul K. Reed and co-pastor Deborah Reed. Will you praise God for them, amen, as well as the executive pastors who happens to be the visionary and founder of this particular function in the Preachers Network 901, our friend and our brother, Dr. Kevin Patterson, Jr. Let's cheer God for, for him tonight and to these mighty members and friends of the New Friendship Baptist Church, thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of the board and the members of the Preachers Network 901, we thank you for opening your doors and for hosting us for these Friday night fill-ups. Well, it is time that all of us can play a part 
in our experience, and that is the ministry of giving tonight. Come on, clap your hands for giving because the Bible teaches us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen. A cheerful giver. My brother, amen. Wait one minute. Amen. Because I want to make sure we get all the money, amen, that we need to get. Amen. Everybody that's sitting in here, some people have decided not to give. Amen. And we want to give. Amen. We're asking all board members, amen, that are present tonight, you know what your responsibility is, what your obligation is to give. If you do not have cash, Amen. There are other avenues and ways that you can give. It's on the screen for those who are virtually watching us. You can give via cash app. That's dollar sign preach 901. That's dollar sign P-R-E-A-C-H 901. Or you can give via Givelify, the Preacher's Network 901 here in the church, as well as PayPal. The information is there on the screen, and if you are here tonight, you can give. Amen. Doc, uh, Pastor um, Kevin Patterson Sr., who is there with the gift and bucket in his hand, amen. I want to pray over those gifts, amen, and then we will give tonight. Amen. Have you been blessed already? We thank God tonight for our guest psalmist, amen, uh, Lady uh, Latoya Strong, and to this preacher, and we have another preacher on the way. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for giving us the best gift you had by sending your son Jesus to live, die, and rise again. And now we are the beneficiaries of his love, of his sacrifice, of the spirit that you left here with us tonight, God, in obedience to the word and the declaration that has gone out. We give tonight. Pray for those who are giving. Thank you for the Priest 901 that seeks to endeavor and to be a beacon of light and hope to those in our community as we go out to minister and to provide community service for those who are the least, the lost, the left out, and even the lazy. Thank you for these men and women of this network and those of our friends who partner with us to make a difference in this community. Take us higher now is our prayer in jesus name the people of god said together amen if you you're going around let's give amen i ask that you will stand once you've given if you'll stand when it seems like the doors of progress have closed in your face and no matter what you do your friends don't appreciate you need to just steal away fall down on your knees tell god tell my god have mercy please come on lord i want you to see Is a narrow way. It don't have no crooks or bends. Lord, since I started on this Christian journey, I found out that Jesus is my only friend. You need to just feel I fall down on your knees. Tell God, come on, put your hands together like this. I have mercy, please, come on, Lord, I want you to see, I'm going to sing that again, oh, the right way is a narrow way, it don't have no crooks or beans, ooh, since I started on this Christian journey, I found out that Jesus is, he's my only friend. Just you, good God Almighty, fall down on your knees. Tell my God, have all given tonight, have mercy. Oh, yeah. Lord, come on. I want you to see, Lord, about me. 
is a nap. Man, you plan that thing. It don't have no crooks or men. Since I started at the age of eight, this Christian journey, I found out that Jesus Christ, Mary, baby, is my friend. Woo! God bless you tonight. We are so grateful tonight for our worship leader in the person of Dr. Stephen R. Hunter. And we praise God for him. Before our capable psalmist come, I want to take this time to present our preacher, our next preacher tonight. Amen. We are so grateful that the Lord sent him our way. It is my signal honor to present him. He's no stranger to us, no stranger to Memphis. He's a native of Memphis, Tennessee. He's a graduate of one of those other schools, high schools here in Memphis, Tennessee. I am so thankful to be able to have this awesome privilege to present him tonight to the body of believers, viewers, and worshipers of the Preachers Network 901. He is a learned man. One of the greatest things that I love about this preacher is that as God has continued to elevate him, he has kept the common touch. He has been an humble, faithful man to the gospel, to the ministry that the Lord has called him. I'm so grateful that to know that after attending various schools, Christian Brothers at Crichton College, um, recently, this past year, he and I shared in receiving our Doctor of Ministry together at the Memphis Theological Seminary. I'm so thankful for the person of Dr. Zedrick Kirk Clayton II. He is one of my closest friends and brothers. I'm so grateful that to know that the past few years he has served faithfully, he and his wonderful wife, Lady Erica Clayton, in Clark's Dale, Mississippi at the City of Truth Church. More recently, he was elected to serve as the new pastor at the Olivet Fellowship Baptist Church here in Memphis, Tennessee. With all of that said, I believe that the Lord has called Pastor Clayton for such a time as this. He can and he will preach if we pray. And I believe there are some prayers and some worshipers and some witnessing folk in the room and on the screen tonight. Pastor Clayton, we're praying with you, my brother. We're praying for you. And after the song of her choice, Lady Strong come back to sing to us the next speaking and preaching voice be that of our friend and our brother, Bishop and Dr. Zedrick Clayton. Will you receive him by repeating after me, God bless Dr. Clayton. Come on, say God bless Dr. Clayton. One more time, say God bless Dr. Clayton. And will you point this direction and say, preacher, preach God's word. Come on, let's welcome Lady Victoria Strong again. Oh, come on and put your hands together. We're getting ready to go a little bit farther, a little bit higher. Ooh, if anybody asks you who I am, who I am, who I am, if anybody asks you who I am. Come on, put your hands together. 
glad about it. I'm glad about it. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Thank you. That as wretched as we are, that we can consider ourselves your children. As unholy as we are, and as righteous as you are, you still call us your own. And for that, we say thank you. Now, God, it is preaching time. I cannot preach until you come. Hide me behind Calvary's cross, allowing your people to see you and not me. God, allow me to decrease as you increase. Allow me to be minimized as you are maximized. Have your way tonight. Take over my mouth, take over my mind, that I may think your thoughts and speak your words only transformation will take place. Give me clarity of thought and accuracy of speech. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you're excited to be in worship or at least tuning in to worship tonight, I dare you to put your hands together, open up your mouth, and just worship the name of our God. For truly, our God is amazing, our God is awesome, and our God is faithful. Uh, to these preach brethren and to our visionary Dr. Kevin Patterson and to of the board of this Preachers Network 901 and to all of the preachers uh, that are here and to everyone that is here and those that are watching, it's just good for us to be here. Amen? I'm excited to share tonight. I don't have a lot of preliminaries. Psalms 34. Psalms want to begin reading at verse number one. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Again, Psalms 34. And it says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Verse 4 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. For the time that it's ours to share tonight, won't you give your neighbor my subject and say, Hey, neighbor, oh, neighbor, I just couldn't help it. That's the wrong neighbor. Look at another neighbor that looked like God has done something for him and say, Hey, neighbor, oh, neighbor, I just couldn't help it. You may be seated in the presence of God. I just couldn't just couldn't help it. I just couldn't help it. Have you ever been in a place in your life where God has done something so great and so amazing in your life that it just literally almost blew your mind? 
where you seemed like that your back was against the wall. There were times where your back was against the wall and the only way that you made it out of the situation that you made it in because it was only because of the hand of God that swooped in and kept you out of the stuff that you were in. Have you ever had situations and circumstances in your life where things had gotten so bad that your money couldn't get you out, your connections couldn't get you out, your education couldn't bring you out, and the only way that you made it, it was because God stepped in and made a way out of no way. Have you ever been there where you had to simply reflect over your life and think about the many times that God has brought you out and brought you through, and when you think about those things, the only the response you have is to give God glory. Your hands start waving and you ain't trying to speak to nobody. Tears start flowing down your face and ain't nobody bothering. Your feet start moving and you ain't trying to go nowhere because when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, there's a response that comes out of you because of the great things that God has done in your life. And I mean, if if God hadn't brought you through nothing I can understand you're not praising but I'm talking about those of us that have been through some st tough and rough stuff that God has allowed us to survive some of the craziest seasons of our lives we have no other choice but to give God glory because God is the one that has made a way for us and brought us out of the things we found ourselves in and the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, you can always tell in church who's God made a way for because of how they respond. Because when they say, bless, praise the Lord, everybody, the one that hands go up first, the one that gets the loudest is because they got a memory. They can think about what God has brought them out of and they respond because of his goodness. Ah, and truth of the matter is, this is the mindset that David has in our text tonight. For the Bible tells us that the background of Psalm 34 is found in 1 Samuel chapter 21. Because David is on the run. He is on the run from King Saul. Because Saul was trying to attack him. Because David was next in line to be king of Israel. Saul is on the David rather is on the run. Because Saul is hating on David. Because David got next. Have you ever been there? Where people, where you're being attacked by someone who has more than you. You've been attacked by someone who has more education than you, that has more money than you, that has a bigger title than you, and you're trying to figure out why are they bothering me? I'm low on the totem pole. Well, can I help you tonight? It's simply because you got next. And the reason why you're going through the hell that you're going through is because the grace of God and the anointing of God is so rich on your life that it does not matter who don't like you and what they say about you, God still is going to open the door for you because you got next. Uh, uh, have you ever been there? The Bible says they are attacking him not because of his presence but David is being attacked because of his future. Bible says that Saul hated David because of a song that other people were singing. The Bible says that the women came around and said that Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. And as a result, Saul got in his feelings because of what other folk were saying about David. And the truth of the matter is some of us that's in this room and that's online have been in places where you've been attacked, not because of what you said about you, but because of what others have said about you. Because when others saw you, 
your greatness, when others saw your giftedness, when others saw your power and began to celebrate you, there were some folk who could not handle it. And brothers, I've always said, brothers and sisters, I've always said, the way you know who's for you is not in times of mourning, but the way you know who's for you in times of when you're being elevated. Because everybody will cry with you, but not everybody will celebrate you. Everybody will mourn with you, but not everybody will thank God for the elevation in your life. Everybody will show up to your funeral, but you only get a handful of folk that'll show up to your party because you will know who's for you when it's your turn to be celebrated. So the Bible says that David is on the run. And he ends up in the camp of King Achish. And he is there and people begin to recognize David. And when they saw David, they began to say, oh, yeah, you're the one. We heard about you. You're the one that killed Goliath, aren't you? You're the one that, that you could play the harp. And we heard about you. We had your little EP. We got you on our iTunes playlist. We know about you, David. And the Bible says because he was recognized and because of what he was going through with Saul, David got, uh, got in his feelings and got scared because he thought that Achis was going to try to do to him what Saul was trying to do to him and so the Bible says that David started acting insane that David started acting as if he was out of his mind David started acting a fool and I've come to let you know that times in our lives when we've gone through some stuff that's been crazy and we stood all we could stand and we got to change our disposition and sometimes we got to act a fool. Don't sit here and act like that. In fact, you were on your job. You were nice and kind to everybody, but you haven't took it for the last time. They done wrote you up for the last time. They done said something crazy about you in the break room for the last time and you have to give them a piece of your mind. You done acted a fool. You've been in that relationship, gave everything you could give, loved them as hard as you could but they still wouldn't act right and one day out of the blue you just came home get your lamps get your blankets get your coats get your shoes and get out you just gotta act a fool and so the text says uh, that day when David acts a fool Achish says why have y'all brought another insane man into my camp. And the Bible says that Achish tells David to leave. And David gets outside of the camp. And once he realizes that he was outside of the camp, David begins to pen Psalms 34 after he had been released out of what he thought was about to be his demise. David opened up his mouth and declared, I will bless the Lord at all times. Because David understood that I've just been delivered. God has just made a way. And I got a responsibility to give God glory for what he's just done in my life. He says, I bless the Lord at all times. Which means that David's praise is unconditional. Which means that it doesn't matter what's going on around him. He says, I bless him at all all times, in the good times and in the bad times. See, it don't take rocket scientists and it don't take real faith to bless God when things are good. But the truth of the matter is, can you still bless him when the bottom has fallen out of your life? Can you still bless him when your money is funny and your change is strange? Can you still bless him when your marriage is on the rocks? Can you still bless him when you're finding yourself not knowing how you're going to make it from day to day? He said, I bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually 
be in my mouth, which means that David is having some private praise time. Because David understood that I've experienced the good things of God. And because I've experienced the good things of God, I ain't got time to get to church. I got to give him glory right now because of what he's done in my life. He says his praise shall continually be in my mouth, which means... If I'm going to praise him, I not only can praise him with my hands and my feet, but there are times when God requires us to open up our mouths and give him glory. I dare you even right now to take about 10 seconds, if you know that God has done good things in your life, to open up your mouth and give him glory. Even you at home, I know they sitting here looking at you crazy, but in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your living room, open up your mouth and give God power. He, he says, uh, then he says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Which means that when I praise him, I'm not just praising him with my mouth and my body, but when I think of the goodness of what God has done, my soul begins to respond to the point that I lose myself in worship. And at that point, I'm not worried about who's standing around me because my soul is responding because you don't know what he's brought me out of. and You don't know the dangers he's brought me through. And even if you don't praise him with me, I will give God glory out of myself. Watch this. He says that when my soul starts praising, he says then it will spark something in other folks. He says, he says my soul makes its boast in the, in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Which means that when I praise him out of my soul, there are others that will see me praise and they'll get happy. Which means my praise gets contagious. And then the others will start egging me on. But then what will happen is that David said, after I got through praising him, and I realized that the humble heard and got glad, I looked at them and said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. This thing started as a solo, but now we can make it a duet. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, now, now let me help you because sometimes we can misunderstand that. He says magnify, which in many cases it means to make big. But the problem is you can't make God bigger than he already is. So what What's David saying about how our praise magnifies God? He is saying, I'm not trying to make him bigger in the universe, but the more I praise him, I make him bigger in my situation. So the more I give him glory, the bigger he becomes in my sickness. The more I give him glory, the bigger he becomes in my finances. The more I give him glory, the bigger he becomes in my house. The more I give him glory, the bigger he becomes in my city. The more I give him glory, the bigger he becomes in me. Is there anybody in the building that's gonna give him glory so we can make God bigger? His name together. Now the word exalt here literally means to hoist him or to throw him or to lift him. Now, now, now that excites me because I remember 
we're going to parties. And certain parties, we had these things called party poppers, which meant that someone could be standing over there where the fourth is. And if the fourth pops his party popper, the confetti was spread over on this side. And if somebody's on this side, pops their party popper, the confetti was spread over on that side. Which means that even if you didn't pop it, you it still fell on you. Which means that when we bless him, we can shout thank you over here, and Jesus over here, and the glory of the Lord will fall on everybody in the room. Is there any, is there any body here that want to give God glory because he's big in our lives. He, he, he said, we exalt him. We exalt him. We exalt him. His name together. Which means that when we praise him, God begins to move on our behalf. That when we praise him, God begins to show up in our life. And whatever we need God to be, he will be that when we give him glory. Which means you may need him to be your healer. And you may need him to be your provider. But it doesn't matter what you need him to be. When we praise him, he will show up and be everything we need him to be. That can give God glory. Because you understand that the more I praise him, the more he shows up. The more I lift him, the more he makes the way. The more I bless him, the bigger he becomes. When I praise him, all of my bills get paid. When I bless him, he begins to heal bodies. When I give him glory, he'll show up in my house. When I give him praise, he'll show up in my job. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt let us let us let us exalt his name together won't he show up on your behalf won't he open doors won't he provide for you won't he step in shout yes Shout a yes, yeah, 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 ah, ah, woo, yes sir, won't he provide, won't he heal, won't he step in, yes sir, yes sir, ah, ah, woo, woo, yes sir. That's one more reason that I give him glory. One Friday on a hill called Calvary, he died for your sin and man. But that's not how the story is. Three days later, he got up. He got up. He got up. Yeah. Yes. 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 Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins away. Rising, he justified and freed me forever. One day, he's coming back. Is there anybody that can give him glory? Because he's coming back. Shout it out. Yes. 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 Yes, sir.
The door of God's house is open. The door of God's house is open. If someone is here, doesn't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, would you come? Um, if you're here, if you're online, you need uh, to know Christ. If you don't know him, you can get to know him today. There are several uh, churches who are represented here. Dr. Clayton, um, Pastor Bradford, and many others who are here that you can join. Uh, we'll get you right where you want to go. If you're here, come to Christ uh, while you have time. What is this? Got me feeling so good right now. What is this? Makes me want to run on anyhow. Whatever it is, I just can't hold my peace. Oh, what is this? Got me feeling good right now. What is this? Yeah, makes me want to run on anyhow. What?
Don't stop, don't stop. Tonight, tonight, we need your help tonight. Amen. We need your night help. If you've been born again, we need some more money. If you've been born again, we need some more money tonight. Amen. Pop, get the basket, if you don't mind, tonight. Preachers, amen. I know you've saved some of your money tonight to go and get some food, amen. But we want you to give tonight, amen, so that we can be a blessing to these preachers. Woo! Pastor Marlon Bradford, Pastor Zedrick Clayton, don't ever come to church, don't ever hear a word without sowing into the word. Amen. Tonight, amen. Give me my phone, amen. I didn't bring no checks, amen. Amen. I'm going to give an extra $50, amen. This is all the cash I got. Wait, I'm going to send my money so that I won't be lying in the pulpit, amen. Dollar sign, preach 901, amen. This money is not going to any one of us as a member. We're definitely sowing, amen, and being a blessing, paying our bills tonight, amen. And we want to be a blessing to those who have worshiped with us, who have been a participant, amen. And we want to be a blessing and have some seeds sown into this ministry. Just the other week or so, amen, many of these gentlemen and others Amen. We teamed up together and we provided Christmassy to those who are behind prison walls. We were there. It cost money. We gave them snacks and food. Amen. And that came out of the Preach Network 901. So I don't want you to think that your money is being wasted. Amen. It's not greasing nobody's pockets. Amen. We got our own churches. Amen. And, and they take good care of us. Amen. And so we thank God for you. Some of our members are watching. We are asking you to join us tonight in sowing a special sacrificial gift tonight. Those in the audience as well, get your gifts together. Amen. And Pastor, amen. Pop, if you would just go ahead and be given. I've sent my 50. This is an extra 10. Amen. I believe in giving. We believe that we cannot be God's giving no matter how hard we try. Amen. Thank you for those who are sending money via the cash app. You can give via Givelify. Amen. Give via Givelify tonight. The Preachers Network 901. Cash app again is dollar sign preach. The number nine, the number zero, the number one. P-R-E-A-C-H 901. Amen. Let's hear it again for our preacher. Amen. Our second preacher, Dr. Clayton. Amen. Who's coming right now? Amen. I just wanted to do this. I wanted to. I got up here, and when you get around preachers, you get nervous. But I wanted to recognize my wife who is here. Lady Erica, won't you stay? <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my girl there. Amen. So good to see our minister of music, Brother Calvin, and Sister Jazz with us tonight as well. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Members of Olive Fellowship, we praise God for you all. Amen. 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 On behalf of Dr. Patterson, Amen. And all of the brothers and sisters of Preach Network 901, Toya Strong, you are somebody. Amen. And so will you accept our act and praise of gratitude for blessing us on tonight? Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's cheer and thank God for her tonight. These black men over here are just doing the doggone thing, aren't they? Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so very much tonight. Amen. Dr. Hunter. Amen. Dr. Stephen Hunter. Amen. Let's thank God for him, our worship leader tonight. Amen. And to all of you, God bless you, all of our preachers. It's time to go. It's eight minutes past our time. Brother Willie, we got to get out of here. Amen. Let's thank God. Pastor Bradford again, bless God for you. Pastor Clayton, bless God for you. We're going home tonight. Amen. If all of our hearts and our minds are clear, let us stand to our feet.
receive this prayer and act of benediction. Lord, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt. It is our prayer now that as we leave from this place, that we won't ever leave from your presence. My prayer is that the grace of God, the love of Jesus, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with all until we meet, see, and greet each other again is our prayer. Good night. God bless you. May the peace of God go with you. All preachers, all preachers, we ask you to assemble here to the front for a photo.